Okay. Hello everyone. I am your host Keisha. Welcome to another brand new episode. We don't do great things, our guests do, and we are just a medium to bring those amazing ideas to you. So let's jump in today. We have a special guest. She is known as a pur- purpose whisperer and spiritual life coach, a master scientific hand analyst. Certainly unconventional work, right? So totally. It's- <laughs> so give me give you a sneak peek maybe it's not palm reading and it's accurate that Forbes wrote about it and her work identifies life purpose special gifts or talents and blind spots to take action on i find it fascinating and those who do call it eye opening freaky accurate and life changing so let's welcome jane sanders woo Thank Thanks for you, Keisha. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited to be here. Woohoo! Yay! Thank you so much. So, where are you joining us from right now, Jane? I am in Denver, Colorado, in the United States. Oh, all right. Oh my God, I heard the winter there is uh, brutal. So, no, no, <laughs> no? because oh, okay. it's so dry. You know, even if the temperature is low, it doesn't feel as cold as it is in other parts of the country where it's humid. Ah, I and see. So far, we've had a very warm winter, like winter. record oh, setting, oh. and a little concerning as far as fire danger. But um, right, right now, it's 35 degrees Fahrenheit, which is kind of kind of chilly, but it's sunny, so it doesn't feel that cold. Yeah, yeah. Well, great to hear that. As usual, I'm based in KL, and it's hot every day. It's either very <laughs> hot or it's raining. So. Not much choices there, so yeah. I'm excited and curious to discuss about what you do, uh, specifically scientific hand analysis. So tell me about yourself and what you do, probably for our listeners. So yes, I, I'm a past corporate brat. Um, I have an MBA and spent, you know, a couple decades in the corporate world, and was also my a professional speaker for like 20 years, calling on the corporate world, but. You know, I just wasn't fulfilled, Keisha. I just was every time I had three different careers, and I would just hit a wall where I was just kind of bored and knew I was supposed to do something else. And I knew what I was missing was my purpose. I didn't know what that was, and I really believed everybody has one. So I started doing a very focused search, and um, interestingly, ran across a headline on Google. For a teleseminar, and it said "Discover Your Innate Life Purpose," and I was like, "Oh, I couldn't click on that fast enough." And <laughs> the first words I saw were "hand analysis," Ooh. and I thought, "Oh, baloney! You know, that's not going to give me what I need. I don't. I palm reading's fun. There are really good palm readers, but that's not going to give me my purpose." And then I saw the word "scientific," so that one word helped me put aside. For the moment, my skepticism, and I listened to the teleseminar. Pretty, pretty interesting and convincing. Really wanted my purpose. I got a hand analysis done. Whoa! Blew my mind. Um, just explained so much. It was like, oh, no wonder I liked that, but I didn't like that, and no right. wonder that worked, but that didn't work, and. Um, explained why I wasn't happy in my previous jobs and why I liked the one I liked best. It just all made sense and explained patterns. And um, so, long story short, I was so lit up and on fire before I even knew what to do with the information. And I just thought, gosh, if I was that excited without even knowing yet what I wanted to do for my purpose work. I want to help people feel like that, so wow. I started studying it and studied it for five straight years. Started doing it with my first certification. I'm certified at four levels, and that's all there are. So wow. I'm certified to teach it, and I'm a master scientific hand analyst, which is comes from just the sheer number of hand analysis that I have performed, okay. and I love it. Yes, and that's why uh, I have you here today to share those amazing experience, and also um, wanted to know more about this. So, basically, um, I think you're like what everyone in the late twenties nowadays face: um, corporate life and 
they want to find a purpose in life. And now, Jane, we're living in a strange era. Era. There are many different terms for it as well, but one of them is the Great Resignation, also yeah. known as the Big Quit. So this is the ongoing trend of employees voluntarily leaving their jobs, and. They say that the, uh, this is happening a lot in the US, but actually we don't need to go so far. Even in my circle of friends, uh, in the last one year, a lot of them have changed their jobs. And mm-hmm. bec- the same way like what you said, they're trying to find their purpose, they're uh, still deciding, is this what I want to do in the long term? So you left corporate life. What was the main factor or what was that moment that made you decide to jump ship? Um. Well, most recently, so I had three different careers and I would hit a wall and then do something else. And most before this work, I was a professional speaker and that lasted longer. I really enjoyed it longer, but again, hit a wall. And what really caused it, Keisha, is that both of my parents passed away within three months of each other. And it was just a big eye-opening, good God, life is short. I need to quit farting around and figure out what's going to make me happy. And I, I wasn't on a search for meaning. And that's what the people that you're talking about are on. They're on a search for meaning. The, the world is being called to step up and make the difference that we're meant to make. The world needs that. So we're all being called to get our poo poo together and, you know, make the difference that we're meant to make so that we can change the world and that sounds big and lofty but right. it's true because we can change the world one person at a time exactly. we should never underestimate the ripple effect sure sure totally agree with you and that's why i think the future generation generation is very important that we have to mm-hmm. taught them how because they are the one that will make a major difference in the future yep. so yep. So after that, you shifted to coaching and become a master in hand hand analysis, which you have uh, shared with us just now. I read in the Forbes article that you were featured that hand hand analysis mimics the neural pathways in our brains. So is it really like a life guide? And how do people study this actually? Well, so the lines in your hands mimic the neural pathways in your brain. And we also get a lot of information from fingerprints, which you're born with. Um, I mean, the system, the gentleman that created this spent 40 years and analyzed over 30,000 hands to put this database together. Anybody can learn it. But if everything in your hands means something, it's a huge database. So, um, and I can't imagine, well, I, I, I have memorized most of it just because I use it every day. But I still sometimes need to look some things up. It just depends. Um, and I forgot your other question that you asked me. Yeah. So is it really like a life guide? Um, oh, yes. Okay. Yes. So every marking has mm-hmm. both a master path mm-hmm. and a student oh. path. Master path is where we want to be. Student path is things we still need to learn and things that we struggle with. Okay. And that's the real short version. And nobody can be on the master path of anything 100% of the time because we're human. We're works in progress. But that blueprint in your hands of the master paths, that's your best life. That is your best life. So it is a guide to your best life. When you, I don't care how good somebody's life is now, if they take action on what's in their hands, it can only get better. You are right. You are right. And the fact that it's just there, um, you know, it shows that everything is literally in your hands. You just need some yep. guidance. Uh, and of course, yeah. you're there to help us um, who are lost, probably, and who are still searching the meaning of life. And Jane, I noticed that uh, on your website, you mentioned a lot about your brand as a purpose whisperer. So, Is this the objective or the main objective of hand analysis in general? Most people get a hand analysis because they're searching for their purpose or they want to confirm that they're on the right track. Others are are stuck and overwhelmed, frustrated, confused, 
you know, they're, they, and they need help in figuring out where they're getting stuck and where they need to take action. And hand analysis helps with that as well. I see. All right. Thanks for sharing that. And before this meeting, uh, I think you also shared that you have a lot, a lot of clients from all over the world and mm-hmm. even including our neighboring country, uh, Singapore. So, yep. and just now you mentioned that most of, most of your clients wants to find purpose, right? Uh, through your uh, hand analysis. So I feel like um, besides this as a main factor, what are the most common uh, challenges or what are the most common concerns with your clients? Is it like setting goals or like uh, setting priorities? Has it changed throughout the years since you started? Not really. They're just lost or stuck. You know, they're unhappy where they are, but they don't know what to do or where to go. That is generally. Now, you know, I also have clients who are getting ready to retire and want to make sure they leave the legacy that they're meant to leave before it's too late. Right. Um, some people get hand analysis for their children. So wow. That because, well, if you can imagine, Keisha, as a parent, knowing what your child's purpose is so you can gently guide them toward that purpose and knowing what their biggest tripping points are so you can gently support them support, yeah. through those challenges. Ooh, that's so empowering as a parent. And I do want to state, just to clarify, that the purpose in your hands is not a job description. Wouldn't that be cuckoo? If <laughs> I looked at somebody's hand and said, you're supposed to be a farmer. I mean, so the, it's the, the purpose is a very comprehensive yet specific at the same time, description of the concept behind your ideal work. And everybody has options. Nobody is supposed to be in one job that's right for them. They have options. And also purpose work always evolves. Like with me, I started as a hand analyst. Right. Then I kept getting higher certifications. I then became a purpose coach. So I help people find and live their purpose. Then I also have two more coaching certifications. I'm a law of attraction coach. And as you mentioned in my introduction, a spiritual life coach and all those thread together, they work as one. One. Mm -hmm. You know, if somebody calls and says, well, I want your spiritual life coaching, everything I do starts with a hand analysis. Right. Because that gives me so much insight into the person and where they're getting stuck and where they need to go. Oh, I see. I see. All right, then. That makes sense. So, hand analysis uh, for you is kind of guidance before you do uh, the the overall reading uh, in a person, and you as a life coach help help with that uh, with your clients as well. So, thank you so much for sharing that, Jane. That's very very insightful, and you know it's good to know that some of your clients also do it for their kids, which yeah. uh, pretty much become like a parent handbook for them as well. <laughs> <laughs> which is really really interesting so um, I wanted to talk more about you and hand analysis in general as well so when I started this podcast it forced me to get out of my comfort zone interact with more people and a lot of self-discovery basically definitely improve my project management skills as well because I have to manage my time with my uh, you know, personal time, podcast, my full-time job, and my volunteer work as well. <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> so, it, it kind of forced me to be really good at, uh, in project management. So, how about you? Uh, how did hand analysis help you personally? Did you have any major discovery when you uh, study it or when you uh, master it already? Well, my own hand analysis helped me enormously. I mean, it told me my biggest challenges and what I needed to do about them. And one of them involved ignoring my intuition. Oh. And um, not being aware of it. So I've been working on it ever since, and it'll never be perfect. But now it works for me, especially when I'm coaching. I just get downloads and almost, not almost, I channel when I'm coaching and I'll say something and they'll say, oh, say that again so I can write it down. And I'm like, I have no idea what I said, but it's on the recording. 
So, you know, because I record all my sessions. And then from coaching, I learn from the interactions with my clients. I learn all the time. So, and that's one thing that's in my hand. It's called a perpetual student, which really means I'm a lifelong learner. I love learning. And that's one of the um, possible, one of the many, 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 many possible markings in the hand. Wow, that's really, really interesting. I mean, you're here, you, you are an expert in hand analysis and you've listened to a lot of stories, yet every day you still get to learn something new from your clients. I think uh, that that's really, you know, a very fun job, I think. Um, oh, it is. It, it is <laughs> I've done several thousand hand analysis and each one is wow. like I'm solving a little mystery. Yeah, each, true. Each one mystery. is a discovery. It's so fun. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God. It, it does sound fun. And I feel like um, now nowadays, um, I feel like non-scientific methods or maybe a little bit of magic has become more popular now. Um, like from tarot readings, astrology, and also palm readings. So you also shared on your website a disclaimer that it is different from palm readings. Mm -hmm. So what is the main difference between hand analysis and palm reading? Hand analysis, scientific hand analysis, mm -hmm. is a learnable database. Anybody can learn it. Okay. Um, palm reading relies a lot on the intuitive level of yep. the reader and um, involves predictions. Correct. Hand oh. analysis has no predictions. You know, it's 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 what's in your hands tells your past, past. and current story not your right. future other than what i said before that is if you take action on it your life will get better that's the only prediction i make with hand analysis so it's a scientific database you know okay. that it's a very robust and reliable system the gentleman that created this database wrote a book about it called life prince his name was richard unger and the forward to that book was written by a neurosurgeon at stanford who was using scientific hand analysis with his patients. So wow. this stuff is freaky accurate. And that's <laughs> what people use. I mean, you know, it's uh, I, sometimes and not rarely. So I would say frequently people cry. Um, it chokes them up. They feel so validated and seen right. and understood. I mean, it gives me goosebumps just to even say that. Okay. So when you say hand analysis, it uh, sort of shows your client or our past and current. So does it mean that hand, hand analysis also helps your client to set their intentions for the future as well? Absolutely. And I want to make sure this is clear that some palm readers call themselves hand analysts. So oh. you've got to look for scientific hand analysis. Scientific, right. That's the keyword you know, here. It's clunky, but it does differentiate this particular modality and yes i do believe that people are becoming more and more open to mm -hmm. metaphysical modalities um absolutely exactly. and this is not metaphysical it's scientific mm -hmm. um i am metaphysical i believe in all that stuff because i've experienced it wow um, so you know i'm and there's always overlap even with the corporate assessments that people might be familiar with Myers-Briggs, Strength yeah, yeah. Finders, DISC, there's still going to be overlap in the personality parts. For sure. None of those identify purpose. And oh, none yeah, of those yeah. identify your biggest tripping points. And where if you take action here, your life is going to get better. They don't do that. Yes, yes, and that's true. It's dependent on how they answer the question and how they interpret the question and how the question's written. Hand and analysis. They're good. <laughs> And their mood. And <laughs> hand analysis is completely independent of all that. You don't need to say Correct. a word. I just need your hand prints. Yes, yes, that is true. So funny that you brought out the other favorite or I mean other scientific methods such as MBTI, DISC, uh, Gallup Strength Finder. From yep. among these, uh, are there any favorites or the one that you still use nowadays or now you just full on hand analysis? Full on hand analysis. <laughs> I experienced them all when I was in the corporate world. And I, for example, I took Myers-Briggs three mm. times and got three different responses. Yeah. 
So that's the challenge is it's, you know, there's a little bit of inconsistency, user yeah. error and could be inconsistency in the results. But, and that could happen too. If you get hand analysis from two different hand analysts, but not <laughs> as much, right? So that's why it does matter about the certification and hmm. the, the master level. There's few of us at that level. I see, I see. And that master level you mentioned just now, there are four, right? Correct? I don't know. There, No, there's four levels of certification. Oh, okay, so, okay. Certification. And I'm right. level four, which means I'm certified to teach it. But the right, master right. is a title that belongs to people that do at least a thousand <gasps> hand analysis. And I've done at least three times that. Oh so, my God. That's amazing. A lot of yeah, <laughs> a lot of hands. Oh my gosh. Yeah. 3,000 mysteries. Oh my god, I think there should be like a CSI just for hand analysis. That would be so amazing. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So uh, thanks for sharing that. I mean, it's very interesting to share the scientific method and the metaphysical part because I wanted to ask you about this because uh, last weekend I celebrated my birthday. And Happy belated birthday. <laughs> thank you so much. And we wanted to make it like... Um, I don't know if you watched this movie called Midsummer, so it's it's kind of scary. But but basically, it's just like uh, everyone wearing flower uh, flower crowns, and then the guys just wearing like flower necklace. And then my friends who are into zodiac and tarot reading, they started doing analysis for everyone, and and everyone ended up asking about their work, life, love. Um, so there, you know, there is a growing interest in that kind of stuff because people are just lost, like what you said. They wanna they. They want to know what to do like what's next uh, they yep. just want some guidance and reassurance and like what you mentioned some of uh, your clients cried because uh, they are seeking for validation so it's really interesting um, what all these uh, methods can actually resolve some of these you know feelings or doubts uh, that people face nowadays yeah. you know and they the, what they're they think they're looking for happiness well, happiness comes from external things, so you can never count on that, right? What yes. people really crave is fulfillment. They want to feel meaning, and they want to feel fulfilled. So I always tell people that, and I really believe this, the only way to that deeper and more consistent joy and fulfillment, because joy comes from the inside, is to live in alignment with your innate purpose. That's people that are unhappy or quitting or just, they're not nice. in alignment with their purpose. So it's causing upset. It's almost like, so spirit, source, the universe, God, whatever your term is for the higher power, lights a match under our butt and it's uncomfortable. So, <laughs> you know, do we take action or not? And if not, the universe is going to light two matches. Okay, well now it's getting even more uncomfortable. And if we don't take action then, he's going to pull out a flamethrower. So, you know, it's good to take action when the matches first start. First. So that you don't have to have this big upset like I did with both of my parents dying close together before I did anything about it. You know, I just kept thinking I'd wake up one morning and have this epiphany mm. to figure out what it is I was really supposed to do. And I did work with a career coach, but for me, it just didn't help. So, yeah, I think for a career coach, I think, yeah, um, I've been there before also, Jade. Um, they pretty much uh, analyze or chose like the top three careers that works for me the best. And yeah. all those three careers, very, very different field. So, and I don't know, I just didn't feel like connected or like have an interest in those so it's important again uh, to do those research and then knowing what you're interested in um, before consulting or probably after consulting just don't depend 100% on that it's good as a guidance but when you make it as like your life guide oh I have to follow it I think that's kind of dangerous um, because yeah. probably your heart is not in it as well well, and that's so important, Keisha, because when you're working in alignment with purpose, it feels wonderful. You know you're on track. So 
you've got to go to what lights you up and makes you look forward to doing it every day. And of course there's bad days and, <laughs> you know, little icky pieces in anything that you do. But um, if it doesn't feel good, it's not right. It's not in alignment, period. Yes, yes. And I think some of us learn it the hard way. Um, oh, sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Look how long it took me. <laughs> it took me over 30 years. Wow. Because wow. I had three different career, you know, corporate careers, and um, I just kind of followed my nose. I never knew what I wanted to be when I grew up, mm -hmm. when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. And in college, I just took, you know, I took a lot of psychology, which makes sense considering that I love coaching now, but I didn't know that then. Mm -hmm. um, but I was in business because I figured I could make money, and I right. was paid well, but I wasn't happy. Yes, yes, um, and I think. Another thing is um, when you know what you want, then you can set your priorities, which I mm -hmm. think a lot of my circle of friends or people that I know are struggling because they're like thinking, oh, I want to be happy, but then my priority is this. So let me sacrifice my happiness for a bit. So how do you say it? Delayed gratification, right? Um, right. <laughs> that's, that's why um, it's, you know, a lot of people now go through I don't know, midlife, quarter life crisis very, very early because of uh, these doubts, right? So thank you so much for sharing that, Jane. Now, sure. Yeah, yeah. And now I want to know more about, again, about the process of hand analysis. So how, how, how do you start and like, do you just um, ask your client to send a picture of their hands if they're like based overseas? Nope. Uh, yeah, how does it work? Could you maybe share yeah, a little so bit? Mm -hmm. Once somebody buy, and don't I don't want to forget that I want to make a special offer for your listeners, but Ooh. I use hand prints. Oh. So I send out just a big white envelope that has ink sheets and instructions, oh, which are very long for the instruction impaired. But there's also a video that shows you how to do it on my website. And very rarely, very rarely does somebody mess it up. Anyway, <laughs> so I, I mail them that kind of kit the big white envelope and they mm -hmm. take their prints mail them back to me and then we set up two hour long zoom calls so i've got the prints in my system i've already prepared the hand analysis so that first hour i'm telling you what your hands have to say and it's recorded so you get that recording and i'm showing you the markings on zoom as i'm telling you what i'm seeing um and you also get the recording and a summary report of your analysis. And then the second hour is for a week or two later, after you've had time to watch the recording, because there's so much information, it's hard to take it all in. Mm -hmm. um, and that second call is to answer any questions, Trend. help you integrate the information. If somebody's interested and needs support with coaching, we can talk about that, but it's, it's what, however I can serve them on that second hour. So that's what's allowed me to have clients in, I don't know, 11 or 12 different countries because I use wow. hand prints. I don't do them in person. Even here, in my neighborhood, if somebody wanted a hand analysis, I would still do it on Zoom. Oh, I don't want okay. people in, you know, I don't want to track, of, <laughs> I work out of my home. I don't want to have, you know, strangers walking in and out all the time. Right, right. Okay, that's that's really interesting. So it's from a hand print, yeah, not from like a hand photo. Print. Oh, and, and, I can show you how Ooh. much detail. Yeah, so look at all the detail on this. Oh, ah, okay. Wow. See, it? and it, I can often see more with prints than I can on an actual hand. Right, right, right. Okay. Right? So, yeah, the prints work really well. I use Zoom before most people ever heard of it. <laughs> so, Jane, you're the innovator here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, wow, I mean, I, I don't necessarily use it as well as some people now, but it, it <laughs> does the trick. It's it's wonderful. Yes, right. And then usually when after you get the hand, uh, the hand print, how how long do, does it usually take to go, uh, through a, through a thorough or detailed analysis for you? It for me to prepare the analysis. Yes. Yes. Um, I will say twenty to forty minutes for me wow. to prepare it. So there's a lot of time involved. I mean, this is, and with all my education, you know, five years of learning and the, my level master, I mean, I am average price for my experience and certification. 
Um, but it's not a hundred dollar palm reading. You know, this <laughs> is very ac- this is very accurate. This is very comprehensive. You take action on it, it will change your life. Period. Mm-hmm. So yeah, my retail price is five hundred, but for wow. or four ninety seven, um, and you can get that on my website. But for podcasts, now here's going to be a little bit of a confusing thing for podcast listeners, especially yours, Keisha. I offer a hundred dollars off that, Ooh. but I need to give a special link for that. So either we can put it in your show notes, or they can contact me through my website, mm-hmm. and I can give them that link. But I also want. When do you know when this is going to air? Um, not sure. Probably January. Definitely not this okay. month, though. Yeah. All right. So yeah. So I knock it by a hundred dollars down to three ninety seven. Wow. Um, so good deal. You know, that's like twenty <laughs> percent or something. Yes. Thank you so much for the offer. I'll share the link uh, in the episode description, and also if you're watching on YouTube, I'll share it in the uh, video description as well. Thank you so much. Awesome. To you. Yeah, yes. you bet. Yeah. Oh, okay. Now I have to promote my episode so people will be interested, and then I can learn from there as well. Ah, uh, maybe I'll try it as well. Um, so thank you so much again for the offer for Spillity listeners. See, you're lucky, and I'm lucky to have Jane uh, as a guest here. Um, so. Of course, when we look at your website, there are a lot of resources there. We can see uh, client testimonials, and also I noticed that you have a book, and yep. you you are a speaker, and uh-huh. you are a hand anal- analyst, which is very very cool job. So, uh, Jane, what do you do for fun? Um, I mean, hand analysis is fun, but like yeah, no, no. <laughs> for your hobbies. <laughs> Yeah. I understand your question. The main <laughs> thing, and what is such a huge part of my life, is I have a horse, <gasps> and I ride my horse almost every day. He's oh boarded, God. or she is boarded, um, less than ten minutes from where I live. So, I unless I just cannot do it, or I'm out of town, I go every day. Oh my um, God! Yeah. Wow. Wow, so this is wonderful, just wonderful. They've been a huge part of my life for 30 years. Do you used to ride uh, competitively or j- oh. just as a recreational? Just recreational. Wow, I, I'm not interested in competition. I just <laughs> like be- being out in nature on a horse. So I like trail riding, and I don't even ride western. I ride. I have my my tack, wow. meaning my saddle and bridle are Australian, actually. And um, so, yeah, I'm not comfortable in Western saddles. They make my butt hurt. <laughs> <laughs> okay, some life tips here for Jade for uh, horse riding uh, who are still in beginners. Um, there, uh, Jane gave you some tips there. So <laughs> thank you so much for sharing. I mean, horse riding hand analysis. Oh my God, Jane, I think you've done everything. Uh, is there anything that you're tar- uh, targeting to do probably next year? Since, I mean, sorry, yeah. I mean 2022. Uh, what's next yes. for you? Yeah. I am really focusing on taking this work to the corporate world because that's my background and it's greatly needed. So I am in a couple of different groups now that I hope will help me um, get the connections that I need to work with CEOs and executives um, because it really helps in business as well. I mean, imagine Keisha, if you were a leader And first of all, because there's so much self-awareness that comes from a hand analysis, right. self-awareness is at the core of emotional uh, intelligence. And the more self-aware you are, the more authentic you can be and vulnerable. And that's what creates trust and safety in the workplace, which mm-hmm. is critical for engagement and morale. Um, and if you know the purpose and special talents of your team members, you can assign them projects and positions that are more in alignment with their blueprint, with who they really are. So that's going right. to increase engagement. And bottom line, all that increases retention. Yes, correct. And actually, it saves uh, saves time for these companies as well because looking for uh, new talent and everything, that is such a costly and long process. Oh. <laughs> See, I think It's you're expert. It's horrible now. I mean, yeah. I really feel for employers. Um, <laughs> Because this, you know, the big quit, which I hadn't heard that before, and I love that. Mm-hmm. Um, I have heard the great resignation, but um, yeah, and people aren't staying. Yeah, and 
I mean, yeah. when I saw that article, they mentioned specifically in the US, but uh, I've seen it like all my friends, um, my my parents' colleague, my sister's friends. Yeah, it's all happening around us. Um, no matter, uh, no matter. Even though, even though they are the lucky ones, for example, in a company they didn't get laid off, they still resign because they they just they want that purpose, you know, in life, yep. uh, and figure out what's the best way. And they do that by quitting their jobs and also in the time for themselves. And especially now, everyone is working from home. They realize that probably their employer um, is not as good as they thought to be. Like. Um, For example, like working from home, probably uh, there's a lack of trust or transparency, which affects the relationship yes. when you're working. So um, I think that's one of the main factor as well. So Jane, I'm uh, looking forward to see your work in a corporate world soon. Thank you. I'm excited <laughs> about the possibilities of that, and I, I really believe it's going to happen. Certainly within two years, you know, at the most. Ooh. And I'm still doing the individual work because it's so fulfilling. For me, um, and I will say, Keisha, of all the hand analysis that I've done, not one person has ever asked for a refund. Wow! Wow! So wow. that's how meaningful this work is. So I just want to encourage your listeners: if if this has resonated with them, there's a reason, right? So it's um, yeah. There's again, no accidents. Yes. Again, the yeah. key word here is scientific. Hand yeah. analysis. <laughs> thank you. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Because I know you as an uh, academia. Um, you you say you're from MBA. I think these terms are really really important for you as well. <laughs> well, no, I trained you well. It's to differentiate <laughs> that it's not hand analysis slash palm reading. It's scientific hand analysis. Yeah, is extraordinarily accurate. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And now I can't wait to try it out, probably. But, ooh, I'm so. In- Thank you so much for sharing these uh, fun facts and, of course, your expertise as well. So again, thank you, Jane, for joining. For our listeners there, I hope you learned something new and you are equally inspired by Jane's story. And don't forget, if you're interested to try it out, um, I'll leave the details below on how you can reach out to Jane to get a hundred dollar off uh, from the base price. So make sure you follow our Instagram at Spill the Teapots and visit our website SpillTheTeapots.com. And Jane, would you like to share your social media as well? Where can we find you online? Yeah, so my website is Purpose Whisperer. dot com whisperer um, <laughs> dot com yeah, purpose whisper and um, then LinkedIn is purpose whisperer Facebook is purpose whisperer um, and I have a personal page on Facebook as well with just with my name um, but there's a lot of Jane Sanders even with the Y <laughs> J A Y N E so um, and I don't know what the address is it's some <laughs> number in it because I've had the page for so long. But. For sure, don't worry. We'll link everything yeah. uh, in the description so that our listeners can reach out to you. Thank you, everyone, and hope you enjoyed this episode.